Welcome back to the last of the uh, seven parts of Nature's Water Works, how lakes and, and rivers function. And this is what you can do to protect your water supply. So there's the previous things we've talked about, and this is what we're talking about now. So here are some thoughts of what you can do to protect your water supply. First of all, recognize that water is a valuable resource. All life requires water, as I've stated at the very beginning of these, these seven parts. All economies ultimately depend upon water, whether you're talking about uh, direct things like agriculture and fisheries, but indirectly, um, whether you're doing an industry and you're dealing with water as a component of the product or cooling it, it all just about everything de depends upon water. And much of our recreation depends upon water, whether you're swimming, fishing, boating, whatever. And um, the supplies of fresh water are limited. As I said, only 3% of the world water supply are, are fresh water. And they're very, they're, they're easily overused and, and polluted. So uh, they're, they're valuable and we should protect them. Now, we want to look at water quality, um, and, and we have to remember that whatever is deposited on land, thrown away or whatever, discarded, usually ends up in water. And what gets into water often is transported great distances uh, along rivers or even into the ocean. And vegetation lessens the erosion and transport of materials into, into water bodies. And especially uh, what vegetation moderates excesses and shortages of water and so acts as, as a buffer be, between terrestrial and, and aquatic system. And riparian and wetlands also filter and clean water. So water quality depends often on water. Now, quantity of, of water, there are many ways of reducing direct and indirect water usage. And it's all basically conservation of water resources. So you can you more, use water more efficiently. And a lot of us can use low flush toilets. Uh, if you're in agriculture, you could use pipes rather than, than uh, ditches for irrigation. So in whatever industry uh, you might be involved in, there are ways of being more efficient. And then you can, uh, at home, the kinds of landscaping and, and commercially as well, um, trying to have green lawns in, in, in desert areas is not a good, good thing. If you're living in a dry area, use dry vegetation or, or stones or something like that. But there are also alternatives. You can use air cooling instead of water cooling. And there are various other alternatives that one might use to, to reduce uh, use, of, use of water. Then one should learn about your, your local water supply. And whether you're in a municipality or whether you're using private sources, you're gonna come and get water from surface water from uh, rivers or lakes or you're going to use shallow or deep aquifers via wells. Uh, and then you, one of the things is you should think about what is the size or extent of your water supply? Um, and how reliable is it in a year? Does it decrease in the summertime or uh, decrease in the wintertime? And is, is this going to be something that's gonna last decades or is it going to last centuries? And so part of that is, is uh, are there headwaters, catchment basins, or recharge areas known? Are, are they protected? And when you get your uh, water, how is the wa raw water treated? And are there ways of, of having storage capacity? And how many, how many days can you, can you exist without water? And if there's an emergency, what other alternatives are there? And you can do this as a private individual, or you can do this as a business or a company and figure out all of these things to, to think, think about and then, then act on it. And that means becoming engaged in water-related uh, issues. So you can express your ideas and concerns to officials who are in charge of your water supply, which might be yourself. 
uh, express your concerns with local and regional groups who are interested in water. Uh, you can become a member of those, those, those groups and, and work on improving or, or uh, conserving water. And you can share information across your networks, your, uh, your friends, family, whatever, so that they know more about their water supplies. And you can find ways to cooperatively engage others in water-related issues. And if you can't volunteer your time, you can financially support these kinds of uh, groups who are working on, on, on these issues. And in the province of Alberta, we're lucky in that the government of Alberta has got a long-term plan for, for uh, uh, looking, looking at water. And, has, has now got 11 water planning and advisory groups that, that advise the government what to do. These are called WPACs and they're just about covers the entire province. And if you're living in the province of Alberta, um, you live in one of these, these regions and, and you can support them and find out what they're, what they're doing. Um, and if you're living in other locations, there's other water groups, I'm sure that you can, you can join or, or learn about. So uh, that, is, that is the way um, um, you can protect your, your local water supply. Uh, thank you for your interest in, in these presentations. I hope you will enjoy other Science Outreach Athabasca presentations. <laughs>